Hey, I'm John Cannell. Today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an easy, amazing French apple cake. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 350. It needs to be nice and hot, and this cake comes together so quickly. You'll want about three large apples for one pound of half-inch pieces. You can use any apple you love for this, but Granny Smith or Honeycrisp are really favorites. Honeycrisp apples will retain a lot of their texture. Those Granny Smith apples have like a real puckery zing to them, so it just depends on what you want. Normally, I don't mind some skin on my apple, but for this recipe, you definitely want to peel them because the skin can get chewy after baking and it doesn't have that lovely texture that we want. Once your apples are all peeled, cut the flesh from the core and chop into half inch pieces. Don't worry about anything looking fancy. You just need uniform pieces that will bake up nicely. I was so curious as to why this was called the French apple cake. It's a recipe I grew up with. My mom loves making it because this cake is flavored with so much dark rum. Dark rum is amazing and has tons of flavor. The alcohol will burn off and it just gives you like a lovely compliment to the apples. So I grew up with this recipe, but I didn't know like why it was called French apple cake because you think of a French apple cake more like a French tart or something else. And from what I can tell, it's the brandy and the lack of other seasonings. Like an American apple cake would have cinnamon and nutmeg, but our French apple cake has lots of dark rum, vanilla, and tons of butter for a beautiful light crumb. You can slice your apples however you'd like. If you want to have larger, thin slices, that's totally fine. It could look like this, it'd be kind of pretty. You could have half inch chunks or much larger one inch chunks. After baking, the apple still might have a bit of texture, but it's up to you. So cut accordingly, it makes a difference in how you see and taste the cake. All right, I changed course halfway through and decided on slices, anything's gonna work. My apples are all prepped, I'm setting them aside, and now we're gonna make our easy breezy batter. In a large bowl, over a scale, I'm gonna add one cup of powdered sugar. That's 120 grams. This has almost no flour holding it together. It is so delicate. To puff things up, I want one teaspoon of baking powder, and for contrast, half a teaspoon of sea salt. I always like to use sea salt when I bake. If you're using iodized table salt, the iodine makes it taste much harsher. Sea salt's a very mellow, gentle taste. And if you're using diamond crystal salt, it's even less salty, so you have to use more. It's a whole salt chapter that I could tell you. Grab a whisk, our scale is done. And we're just gonna whisk it up. This little bit of batter will hold together all of the apples. So in this way, it's almost like an apple fritter recipe. Should be pure fruit held together with a bare minimum of an amazing, delicious batter. All right, set this aside and now it's time to go on to the wet ingredients. In a separate large bowl, we're gonna crack two large room temperature eggs. No shells. Pick that out. How pretty that is though, blue. Grab another whisk and we're gonna beat these eggs until they're nice and foamy. You really want to break them up. All right. My eggs are frothed up. It's time to add half a cup or 113 grams of melted unsalted butter. If you only have salted butter on hand, that's fine. Just reduce the salt in the recipe by a quarter of a teaspoon. Mix that in. And the butter, of course, is what's giving an amazing richness to this cake and making it truly decadent. To sweeten things up, I want three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. It's 150 grams. Just whisk that in. This mixture is getting so thick and ribbony right now. Look at that, so beautiful. To this luscious mixture, we're gonna add some flavor, starting with a tablespoon of vanilla. I'm using the last of my homemade batch. Luckily, I have several batches that are stewing away, so I'll be able to use them soon. That's 15 mils. And perhaps one of the co-stars of this cake, a quarter cup of a really nice dark rum. If you don't want to use the dark rum, you can substitute it out for apple juice, water, a little bit of milk. Anything will be fine as long as it complements the flavors. How I wish you could smell this. Vanilla, rum, butter, and the apples together. Oh my gosh, it's, it's game over. This is all done and I'm being kind of crazy today and using three different whisks for this. I should have just used one, but that ship sailed. So we're gonna grab a different whisk. This is a Danish dough whisk and I love it for stirring batters together. 
it's really easy to clean. Nothing gets caught inside of it. I'm gonna combine the dry into the wet right now and gently stir this until it is almost combined. I definitely wanna see chunks of flour still because we're gonna finish this process with all the apples. And you'll notice this batter looks so like thin and delicate and beautiful. It is just going to be amazing. This cake is so simple, I can't help but dress it up a little bit. So I'm reserving a handful of my apple slices. If you're doing apple chunks, just reserve a handful of those too. They'll get sprinkled on top at the end. The rest of the apples go right in right now. Fold your apples in gently. This recipe actually has you smiling because it's just so beautiful and simple. This is gonna be dessert tonight and the boys are gonna be so excited. Okay. Grab a nine inch spring form pan, a little bit of butter and get to work. If you only have a regular nine inch pan, that's totally fine too. The spring form pan will just make this a no hassle release. Just a little bit for the bottom, mostly for the sides. As you can probably tell from the batter, it is so delicate and just like light and delicious, but that means you can often have a bit of difficulty releasing your cake. So be extra cautious and use a round of parchment paper. There we go. Parchment paper is your insurance policy that your cake will release with no issues. Okay, transfer the batter into your prepared pan and smooth it out. Don't you dare let a drop of this batter go to waste. Smooth it out. I'm smoothing it out with an offset spatula. Now I'm arranging those reserved apple pieces on top. Totally optional, it's just because I'm Virgoing out over here. You do you. I don't want these optional apples to dry out, so I'm gonna brush them with a little bit of butter and sprinkle with sugar. Okay, my cake's ready to go into the oven, 350 for 35 to 40 minutes, or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. In you go. Allow your cake to cool in the pan for 20 minutes, then run a sharp knife along the edge just to make sure nothing sticks. Remove the collar. And by the way, yes, this cake does smell amazing. Oh my gosh, it is so soft on the outside. Ooh, Lord. So the one thing is you have to get the paper off without the cake breaking. So just like that, finish your cake off with the dusting of powdered sugar. Give your cake a cut, serve with a big scoop of ice cream, and you're ready to enjoy. Mmm, that is so good. <laughs> My gosh. The cake is so soft, it's almost like custard, and the apples still have a little bit of texture, so you're biting into this amazing dessert with apple, rum, vanilla, and it's just so, so good and really easy to make. I hope you had a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my cake playlist.